Any discussion or corrections to those minutes? <coughs> if not, all in favor say aye. Aye. And then we have a consideration of the treasurer's report as given in your packet. So moved. Second. Any discussion or correction on that? All in favor? Second. Aye. Next up, we have uh, the following individuals need their CDL skills testing reimbursement. It'll be Jason Watson, Jeannie Miller, and Gabrielle Hubbard. And it'll be a total of $300 to get reimbursed. We need a motion to approve that reimbursement. I'll make the motion. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Right. Next up, we request school board approval and accepting the following donations. $100 from the Law Office of Mayor Beth Mock for Pearl's Track. $500 donation from Madison Fasteners for baseball. And a $500 donation from Super ATV for softball. Appreciate these generous gifts and I'll need a motion to approve them. I'll make a motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. All right. Next up is the revised 2022-2023 school calendar. Uh, highlights of it would be obviously the first teacher day would be August 1st, students would be August 3rd, and we would be going back to two weeks of spring break with the first week being used for snow makeups. I'll need a motion to approve the school calendar. So moved. A second. Any discussion? There are a couple things about this. Um, it does change our spring break week that's guaranteed to a week later, which actually matches up with Madison's, I believe. And then at the very bottom, the inclement weather process, we would use our three built-in snow days that were originally on the calendar first. And the, then we would use the e-learning virtual days, the next three days that we would have to make up, they would be virtual days. And then we would go to spring break for the, so we'd have to Day miss seven. six days before we beat in spring break. And everybody, you know, would know that up front, so they would know, you know, if we're on day four, they would know that it would be a virtual day. Can I, real quick, um, so he said, hey, let's talk about this, so we talked about it. Um, I will say, I mean, the state in their weekly blast, um, they were originally supposed to have a meeting last Friday um, and now all the information is still with the lawyers so um, I think that's what Mr. Bates was just being proactive and so the following year we may go back to depending on what they decide on these three days we may end up being back at one. And again the, the main reason that I wanted to look at this was because with the state saying that you could only do three virtual days that put us in jeopardy of having to move graduation back and tacking days on at the end of the year. So I wanted to see if we could get those days in before we had to do that. We don't like to move graduation. That's a nightmare. <laughs> this is a great compromise, in your opinion, Brandon? Yeah, yeah. I mean, we talked about it, and um, the committee talked, and. Um, I think some people would that starting in August is still a little earlier than we would like, um, but it balances out the calendar a little bit. So, or, I mean, it actually makes it ninety and ninety now. So, okay. And it is only starting one day yeah. earlier than, so it's not like we're starting you know a week earlier or anything. And matching our spring break up with Madison spring break was a big plus too because I know we have shared families and we also now match 
the vocational center mm -hmm. as well next year because they have the same thing the first week is snow makeup days right and the second week is they're guaranteed so we'll be exactly on their same schedule good work everybody all right well we have a motion and a second if there's no further discussion all in favor all right all out to our parents and our patrons as soon as possible. Next up, uh, item K is the elementary 2022-2023 book fee. Um, as you can tell in your package, kindergarten has a book rental fee $134.40. First grade is $135.16. Second grade is $145.52. Third grade is $149. Fourth grade is 156.57, and fifth grade 128.56. It seems to me this is not much of an increase at all, is it? Well, it is a little bit. Our technology fees went up a little bit, and we have a new textbook series, which is on the docket for tonight, too. Mm -hmm. um, so if that gets approved, it'll bring everything up a little bit. Average about $24 higher is where we're at. So, um, but we had not increased our tech fees for a while, so that's kind of where we're, where we're at on that. So we will need a motion to accept textbook fees for the elementary. Second. Any further discussion on? Um, where do we lie in along um, the school and high school? Sorry, where do we lay um, with the technology fee? Is it? I know you probably don't know. Does anybody know? That technology fee should be the same across the board. Okay, that's fine. We had collaborated. And we were a lot lower than we were. Okay, good. I think that makes sense. So. And we had collaborated with Mr. Dillman just to talk about now that we are one to one, and then we have the cost of like the device, the um, oh my gosh, the case, all of that. We tried to figure out what you know, how long is the life of life of the device and. What is the cost? So okay, thanks. Mm -hmm. That's all. I have. All right. So we have a motion and a second. So all in favor of accepting the elementary book fees? Yeah. Right. And next up, what we were alluded to, the Max Book Textbook Company, the approval to adopt their process. Bobby, do you want to give any quick overview of this? Actually, I'm going to turn it over to Mrs. Chatham. She's kind of led the, the way with okay. this textbook uh, series adoption, and uh, so I'll let her kind of take it away. So at the start of the school year, we knew that this was going to be an adoption year. So we started right out of the gate working with our teachers, and really it was important for us as a school to just be united. Like, what do we want out of a textbook that we're going to adopt? Because when you adopt, it's a six-year commitment, and we all want to be united, you know, K through five. So we worked with our teachers to really outline like five main components that they wanted to see in a textbook series. And so those were outlined like a clear standards focus, an element with math fluency, use of hands-on learning, classroom discussion, and that real world problem solving. So we spent the first semester of this school year just learning about those five elements, really figuring out like what does that look like in the classroom, what do we want our students to be doing, what do our teachers need, and just spent a lot of time um, collaborating and really figuring out what that was. We um, watched videos, read articles, um, just did a wide variety of uh, different things. And so after that process, after we outlined those five things and learned, we sent a group to um, the math textbook care van, and that group came back and actually scored all of the textbooks that were presented to us on those five areas on a zero, one, or two scale. Um, and then our committee members presented to every single grade level and certified staff member about those elements and what they, the pros and cons of each textbook program. And from there, our um, teachers actually started teaching with that. So we had different grade levels step up and say, you know what, we're getting ready to teach money, so we're gonna use the lessons from this series and see how it works with our students. Um, 
So from there, it just kind of led to this program that we're asking to move forward with, which is uh, McGraw-Hill Indiana Reveal. Um, our teachers really felt like when they were teaching it in their classrooms, it was getting the students more involved. It really aligned to those five key elements, and they just felt like the students were enjoying the math instruction, the teachers were enjoying it, um, and that there are definitely some nice uh, benefits to this program. One thing that is also nice about this program is it does come with a digital component. And so if we are virtual, the students won't have to have internet access to actually connect to this program. They'll be able to get on um, and work and then their work will be saved when they come back online at school. So for families uh, without internet access, this is definitely a big pro with this program because if we do have to have those three virtual days, our students won't already be behind if they have limited Wi-Fi. Um, the other thing that some people really enjoyed are their short little videos connected to each lesson with, you know, we get all the time like, I don't know how to help my kid at home because this is hard. Um, but there are short two to three minute videos that you can actually push out to parents and they can watch that kind of sum up the lesson and what a kid learned that should also be able to help our families at home. I like that. So. Um, but anyways, after that process, like uh, our staff was really involved and we are so appreciative of them. Um, the committee did an awesome job presenting and collaborating with teachers. Our staff was awesome because they were willing to try different things and see what they liked and see what they didn't. Um, and then we had this company come in and do a presentation and then we took it to a vote and we had 22 people of our 26 certified staff participate and 100% of them said this is what they wanted. So in our process. Awesome. So I will need a motion uh, to approve McGraw Hills Indiana Reveal program as elementary math textbook adoption. So moved. Second. All second. Any further discussion or questions for elementary staff on this? Thank you for taking the time to do that. Sounds like it went very well. Laura, can you give us an idea of the cost associated and where we've been before? With the math of adoption? Yes. Um, I can't right now, John. No. no. Sorry. No, that's all right. I could ask you before the meeting. I just got a little curious. I'll look it up and let you know. That's as much on me as anything. Well, Mrs. Chatham's done an awesome job of trying to find out how much of the many lives we already had in the classroom, too. And so there's lots of savings there because we're not going to order everything that comes with the kit because we already have it here in the building. Okay. So it's going to save us some money that way, too, I think. It also looks, according to this, they're giving us $32,000 worth of free materials. Yes. And the cost of this program will be like in the book fees. We have calculated the cost of the student materials. So over the time of the six years with the book fees, it should come out. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Sorry, Laura. That's okay. <laughs> Any further discussion? And all in favor? All right. Aye. All right, and then next up, I believe, is personnel. Middle nope, school. middle school. Middle yeah. school. Yeah. Let's don't forget that. <laughs> All right. So we do have middle school handbook adoption. Um. Do 
we have a second of that motion? I'll no second that. Discussion on that? It's pretty self-explanatory. Table to May's meeting. Yeah. Sure. All in favor of tabling middle school handbook? Aye. 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 Now we're at personnel. First up, we have a resignation uh, of preschool teacher's aide. And that's Donna Brooks. And then we would have employment for middle school custodian Erica Taylor. Her position would be an hourly rate of 1272. Employment for Narcy Burris and Amber McIntosh. Both of them are special education driver and monitor. I hope Amber's driver. <laughs> <laughs> and then we have employment, uh, ECA girls track assistant coach of Bill Eccles. And employment request for middle school boys and girls track coaches would be Peggy. Peggy Eaglin and Kim Crawford. And then employment, an ECA position, the high school yearbook sponsor, and that would be Brandon Fry. And I'll need a motion to approve all the personnel. I'll make a motion. Second. Discussion on such? If not, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Next, we move into conference requests. We have a request from Tom Scroggins to serve on the IHSAA Realignment Committee for Soccer. Total of $160 of operations. And we have a request from Ashley Stoner on expanding inclusion in the library. And that is a $284 coming out of education. Uh, we have a request from Penny Mahoney, Melissa May, and Laura Baldry to go to the IASPO annual meeting. And the cost of that is $965.90. And then we have another request from Ashley Stoner to go to create new program ideas to work with vulnerable groups in our community. And that's at a cost of $238 out of the education fund. And then lastly, we have Jason Watson's request for entry level drivers training. Um, this has to deal with bus drivers and CDLs. And that's a cost of $120 out of Title II A. So I need a motion to approve conference requests. I have a motion to approve. Second. Discussion on any of those? It says under the first one that Mr. Scroggins wants to use the school van. If he doesn't, does that price change? Yeah, well, it would. If he's not able to use one of the school vehicles, then he would get mileage. Just standard mileage. But more well, likely, if he doesn't use the van, he won't be going. Yeah. <laughs> and we got more than one thing. Well, I see none of these other people put in mileage. What's the summer online? What's the online training? Gotcha. Gotcha. No, no. After that, yes. Okay. Any other questions? No. All in favor? Aye. 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 Next up is a field trip request. Uh, Mr. Means is requesting on April. I guess this is a past due. 28. 28. His data request was put in at that time. Okay. For a field trip to downtown Madison, uh, basically kind of between Mill Street and Jefferson Street. He has 22 students going, but he has two adults going too also. He would need a sub for his sixth and seventh period. For this, so I need a motion to approve this. Any concerns or questions? All in favor? Aye. Aye. 
That will bring us to budget financial. Laura? Okay. Yeah. First thing uh, that we needed to talk about is the high school gym floor project. And I, we have three uh, quotes, proposals on that now. Uh, Half-lick hardwood floors is 162,810. They're from Vincennes, Indiana. Cincinnati flooring, 185,775 from Indianapolis. And Foster specialty floors, 206,432,75 from Durham, North Carolina. Um, as you know, Cincinnati flooring has done the gym floor work in the past. Uh, over and over and everybody has been satisfied with them. Um, Tom would like to stay with them. I know they're a little bit higher but he's very uh, satisfied with them and the money for the project, you, as you know, we have applied for a common school loan. Uh, we will know May the 6th whether or not that loan um, has been approved for the project. Um, if it doesn't, we will take some of it out of the rainy day fund, some uh, out of the operations fund, or I have another project that I may be able to take some out of. So um, we have the money available if the common school loan doesn't go through. So I need uh, to hear what you want to do with this. Floor is open for any motions. The thing is, we need to do something so that we can get it uh, going because uh, and get on the list to make sure that we get it done by this summer. I'll make a motion to approve the Cincinnati Floor Company for full mouth out of. The loan, if we get it, if not, we move to out operations. Okay. Do I have a second? I'll second. Discussion. I do want to note that um, when you look at the actual how they wrote them up, Cincinnati Flooring is the only one that has all the. Uh, Besides just the floor, if you notice, they're going to be the ones that remove the ble bleachers. Raise the goals. They're going to raise goals and so forth. So, yeah, they're kind of in the middle in price, but they've outlined more work than what the other ones actually have that we possibly would get stuck with doing that would be a cost. And they also allocated 16 additional man hours to fix any sub-floor issues, too. So they're more thorough. Did. I think it's important for the public to know too that the gym is a classroom. It's not just a basketball arena. It's used every day, all day for PE classes. Congratulations. Any further discussion on this? Not all in favor accepting that bid? All right. All right. Uh, the next thing that we need to talk about is the ele elementary roof bids. Uh, we've also gotten three of those, and as you uh, may know or may not know, um, that money has been approved uh, to be spent to complete our project, project at the elementary because we did the one section we still have two-thirds to go, and um, it was from the Esther three funds, and it has been approved uh, for the full amount of 400, 400, $406,039.62 has been approved to be, to be spent on the roofs. Uh, we had Royal Royalty Roofing, 294018, uh, and they are the ones who did the first section. 
they're from Seymour. Uh, Bambi's Roofing, 311500 at Atwood, Indiana, and HRC Roofing, 548000 from Columbus, Indiana. So if you approve, we'll need a motion so that we can get that going over the summer project, too, and, and the elementary will then have a whole new roof to go from there. Floor is open for a motion. Make a motion we use royalty flooring or roofing, I mean, for the finished elementary roof. We have a second. I'll second. Discussions, concerns, comments on that? Any issues with the current work they've done? No, not really. Or? Um. Roger's been very happy with them, and, and if there is a leak, they will come down immediately and they fix it. And, and as you know, with that rock up on top of the elementary, it does move around, and once in a while it will shift with the wind and the water and everything, and there may be a leak, but they're right here to fix it. They're, we've been very happy with them. Seems so. That's what the right there. Any other discussion? If not, all in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, I think that's all I have tonight. Uh, we do not have anything back on the construction um, common school loan yet. So. Audience, anybody have anything? Okay. Yes. Photo? Yeah, I've got a few things. I know we <laughs> Kind of steered away from the principal's report, but I've got a few things since we're here tonight. Um, first off, just want to kind of recognize uh, and thank our parents and uh, families in the community. We had what was called the Books Are Fun Book Blast. It was kind of a book donation um, for about two weeks, and we had over $36,000 donated to the school uh, where students could earn books, teachers could earn classroom, libraries, um, supplies, things like that. So it was kind of an online platform that over $36,000 was donated uh, to the school in that. So again, thanks to all the people who, who participated in that. Uh, I learn uh, that has started. Uh, it started April the 18th. That'll go through May the 13th. Uh, really, this is our first week that we've really kicked off with um, uh, fourth and fifth grade doing that, so testing is underway. We have music concerts coming up May 3rd, 4th, and 5th. Uh, that'll be third grade, fourth grade, and fifth grade on those days consecutively. So I look forward to seeing those kids perform. That's at 7 o'clock on each of those evenings. Uh, we have kindergarten graduations coming up May 16th and 17th. Fifth grade graduations coming up May 17th and 18th. Uh, we'd like to thank our PTO. We have uh, Staff Appreciation Week coming up next week. And our PTA was is a plenty huge part in that as far as getting some things organized for our staff. So uh, we appreciate their, their time and effort in helping out. And then a couple other things we have the uh, we have our house system here at the elementary, and each house uh, this year has been trying to have what they call a tradition or do something uh, exciting for the uh, school. And so the house Rever, the blue house, they are hosting a parent kickball tournament on May the sixth. So. Um, Board members, if you'd like to participate, you're more than welcome to come play kickball <laughs> at the park. So, and again, that's just uh, to raise a little money for the our house fund and just kind of bring our community together a little bit. And then uh, the House of Altruism, or Black House, they're hosting a third, fourth, and fifth grade dance on May the 13th. So, uh, kids are looking forward to, to those events as well. So, that's all I have. Thanks, Bob. Yep, Thank thanks, Bob. Anybody else? <laughs> Jeff, superintendent. Uh, several things that were last minute. Um, first off, I want to mention that we will have the Career Center graduation on Thursday, May the 12th at 6 o'clock uh, at South Ripley. And we do have 28 Southwestern students that are senior graduates there. So I will be in attendance. I think Mr. Owens is going also. Uh, the next thing is, this was given to me on Friday, to hire a new um, math teacher for the middle school for next school year. 
So I need board approval to hire Robert Most as a middle school math instructor. I'll say. Discussion on This is the correct salary range. Yes. Okay. Perfect. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And this just came today. Um, two more donations from the Mike Hess Endowment from the Community Foundation. Um, for One's for $1,000 for prom event expenses and the other is for $400 to help students with prom dinner expenses. So we need approval for these. So moved. Second. Shouldn't be any discussion. All in favor? I think it's a wonderful thing that he does. And then oh, yes, next on the, the docket is the hiring of a full-time substitute bus driver for the remainder of the school year, and that is Jimmy Miller.
Thank you, everyone.